So I understand the drivers of your strong performance and then perhaps a little bit of caution because we're all hoping for a bit more normal life. But what is the overall message you're trying to uh, communicate today? Because you're increasing your guidance, but you are a little bit cautious about the rest of the year. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And we all hope that we uh, get back to normal life as soon as we can. But we had indeed a strong quarter. We, um, we came into the year uh, strategically better positioned um, through our investments in online, our investments in the store, the 2.6 billion investments last year. So we feel confident uh, about uh, the remainder of the year. Uh, and that's why we also raised our EPS guidance to a low to uh, mid-teens um, from a, a high single digit uh, earlier. Uh, and also, we uh, also increase capacity uh, in our online business. And that's why we also think that we could grow our online business for the total year by 40 percent, which is, of course, a big support for our total sales number as well. Good morning, Franz. Um, uh, Anna mentioned this idea, yeah. this kind of kind of positive outlook, uh, but some kind of caution out there. You keep on making a number of small acquisitions. I'm curious, do you have any ambition at some point to make a much bigger acquisition? We have, um, we have a very strong, uh, strong financial base in our company, and um, we made uh, indeed a number of uh, smaller acquisitions uh, in 2020, uh, which are doing very well for us, by the way. Um, and uh, we are uh, yeah, very alert uh, if the markets uh, will further consolidate uh, and that we uh, take a part of this. And uh, we have uh, good information there, but you can imagine that a number of retailers also got uh, quite some tailwind in 2020. Uh, but I think uh, consolidation uh, will uh, further be stronger in the second half of uh, this year. So there could be some consolidation. You mentioned the online uh, part of your business earlier, Franz, and I'm curious about your expectations there. Uh, you've said that your U.S. e-commerce business will surge more than 60 percent, while global online sales growth will be more like 30. Why is Europe held back on that front? What needs to change in Europe? What would, what would allow Europe to catch up? Yeah, uh, I don't know if you can speak about catching up. We, um, we had in Europe uh, online sales growth of 80% uh, and for the total group of 100% and in the U.S. of 190%. In the 190% of our numbers, we also have our acquisition of Fresh Direct in. Uh, if we take Fresh Direct out, the New York company, which we bought last year, um, then you see that we have a 135% growth in the U.S. So the, the numbers are not so far uh, from each other, especially while, while we have also in Europe a bigger base. Uh, together with Bol.com and together with our uh, our hand business. So I'm very happy with um, our online sales numbers. We have um, capacity in place. And for example, in the U.S., 95% uh, uh, of our consumer base has already access to same-day uh, uh, same day service of our online business. So I'm ha very happy with the strategic moves we made in investing in online uh, and that we also can satisfy our customers at the moment with increased demand. Given the day that's in it, we're getting U.S. CPI later on today, and given your large U.S. business, I'm curious what your perspective is on the inflation picture in the U.S., um, given that we're also seeing companies like uh, consumer product companies like P&G say they're going to raise prices and pass it on to the end consumer. What's your perspective? Is inflation coming through faster or slower than expected? Um, we, have, we have a CPI in the northeast of 2.5% uh, in the first quarter of this year. Uh, and uh, you can imagine that uh, it's our interest uh, in the negotiation with our vendors uh, when we talk about price increases that we only uh, take on board legitimate price increases. So we have our shoot cost models in place where we have economist departments who, who talk about uh, what are the price of commodities, packaging materials, energy and labor. Uh, and that we could try to get an, a, good, a good hand on uh, what is a legitimate price increase. This is also the best protection for our consumers and our customers. And retail has been historically a very good uh, way of uh, deflating prices because we don't want to uh, pass on to uh, consumers uh, uh, illegitimate uh, price increases. So we, we negotiate there. We're very precise. Our shoot cost models help. Uh, and we, uh, we deal with this. If there are commodity prices which are, which are growing, uh, like, for example, grain or potentially energy, uh, then we have to deal with this. But we, we dealt with this in the last decades uh, very uh, solidly, both in inflationary and deflationary environments. And I think we will be successful this year as well. And, Franz, on that subject, are there any areas of the soft commodity space, so food prices uh, in, in wholesale markets, that, that concern you at this point? Or do you think, from a, from a developed market perspective, they're not too alarming? Um, I, th I think that 
you see some shortages, uh, for example, um, in, in the total cost structures. For example, in the U.S., you see transportation uh, being uh, being more scarce, and the availability of drivers and, and truck movements. That might have an impact, uh, impact on, uh, on inflation as well as, for example, also the, the fuel prices uh, linked to trucking. But overall, um, I'm pretty confident that we will have a good negotiation position with our vendors, uh, uh, as, as we did for a, lo for a long time already. Uh, and, in the, in, and we will make sure that in the interest of our consumers that we keep those prices as low as possible. Two commodity price increases we monitor quarter by quarter, and those could be very volatile uh, during a 2021 year as well. Franz, thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. Franz Miller, our whole Del Hayes CEO.